Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm once again back with a gear lock guide. Today we're going to be talking about Duster, who is an absolute blast to play. As you can see, she is low difficulty for co-op and pretty low difficulty for solo, but um, don't be too tough with yourself about it. Just embrace the awesomeness that is Duster. She is very, very enjoyable, and I'm hoping this video will help show you why. So Duster is another of those gear locks who is super fun to play solo, but she's never truly alone. And that is thanks to her trusty wolf, Nightshade. So if you look at Duster's chip, there's actually a second one in here for Nightshade the wolf, who is her companion. So Duster is both a formidable fighter herself with her daggers, her throwing knives, her occasional battery powered upgrades. But meanwhile, Nightshade has its own wolfy skill trees that make playing Duster like having two customizable characters in one. So we're starting here with all of Duster's stuff. Uh, we've got her gear lock mat, we've got her dice, we've got her reference guide, and of course we've got a battle mat out with our trusty troll youngin uh, so that we can demo anything we need to during this video. I actually wanna go ahead and talk about Nightshade first before we talk about any of Duster's skills. And that's because she has Nightshade right from the start. Nightshade is part of Duster's innate abilities. So if you flip over the gear lock reference sheet, you can see that Duster has an innate ability called Shadow Dweller. And this says Duster may start on any position on the battle mat, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. She also starts with Nightshade's initiative die and chip. So we've got Nightshade's chip. Here's its die, it's die number 13. So we'll put it right here for Nightshade. So Duster's innate ability reveals the two most important things about her. One is that she is melee ranged. So you're gonna use melee when you're actually targeting baddies for attack. So if Duster wants to just go stab someone, uh, she's gonna have to get up right next to this careless troll. But you'll have noticed that she can start anywhere on the battle mat. So she can start in a melee or ranged position. And in fact, in any position, as stated by her innate ability. And also she does have some dice that do damage at range, which we'll make sure to flag during this video. Of course, she also starts with Nightshade's initiative die. And that is because Nightshade is basically with her from very early on in the game and will join her in most battles. I wanna note here that Nightshade is a melee fighter. So when it enters battle, uh, you can place the Nightshade chip on any gear lock melee starting space. So there are a couple of things to know about Nightshade and how it is gonna work with Duster. The first thing to know is that Nightshade is a companion who is not entirely dependent on what Duster is doing in order to take its own cues. Nightshade moves separately from Duster. Nightshade has its own turn. Nightshade can target its own baddie, so it does not have to be the same baddie that Duster is targeting. And Nightshade is even able to continue in battle after Duster has been KO'd. One note for that, however, is that Nightshade cannot actually win a battle. A gearlock has to be conscious at the end of an encounter in order for that encounter to be considered successful. So if you are playing solo and Duster is knocked out and Nightshade is still around, Nightshade cannot win the encounter for you. However, if you're playing co-op and Duster gets KO'd, Nightshade can keep going as normal until somebody can do something to help Duster out. So another key thing to know about Nightshade is that it is not just going to automatically come into battle every single time. Instead, Nightshade's motivation is to protect Duster. So if Duster is entering battle at full HP, then Nightshade is not going to show up immediately. Nightshade only comes into battle when Duster does not have full HP. So that can happen in two ways. If Duster starts a battle with less than full HP, then Nightshade will just come in right at the start and roll this initiative die just like everybody else. If you are in battle currently on the battle mat and Duster is injured, but not knocked out. So she's at less than full HP, but she's not out of the game yet. Then Nightshade is going to enter the fray. And then instead of rolling the initiative die to determine where Nightshade's gonna go in the lineup, Nightshade is going to just enter at the top of the initiative meter for the next turn after the one where Duster got hurt. There are ways to boost Nightshade's stats, but typically it just has some basics. So Nightshade starts out with two HP, Nightshade has two attack dice, and Nightshade can move up to two spaces each turn. So Nightshade does not have any skill dice, Nightshade does not have any backup plan. You just start with those basic stats. And we're gonna talk about upgrades that you can do to Nightshade in Duster's skill tree later in the video. But for now, just think of the rule of twos. Two movement, two HP, two attack dice. And then you also have to think about what you're gonna do with Nightshade after Nightshade is KO'd, which is gonna happen with only two HP. Like Nightshade's gonna get knocked out of battle occasionally. When that happens, Nightshade sits out the remainder of battle. And then at the end of battle, you place it back in your prep area with an HP of one. So normally Nightshade has two HP. After a knockout, it comes back with one. And then 
because Nightshade is not a gear lock, there are two ways to heal it up. One is by using Duster's Flint and Tender Die ability, which we are going to get to. And the other is to heal Nightshade up during rest and recover. One thing that's interesting about that phase of your turn, however, is that when you do rest and recovery, only Duster or Nightshade can heal up, but not both. So you need to make sure that you're prioritizing who actually needs the rest more if you're in a situation where they're both missing HP between encounters. So that ought to be enough information about Nightshade for now. We're gonna talk about Nightshade related dice later in the video. But for now, let's talk about some of Duster's professions. Duster has four professions. They are Assassin, Survivalist, Gadgeteer, and Wolf Sister. And she's also got a couple of consumables that we'll discuss. As we mentioned, Duster's die number 13 is Nightshade's initiative die, so that one just starts on her gearlock mat. But now let's talk about dice you can train, beginning with the assassin profession. As usual, all of Duster's dice are detailed on this side of her reference sheet, and we'll be going through all of these together as well. So our first die is called Duster's Dagger, and this one has a lovely bleed effect on it. So as you can see, most sides of this die will have a bleed effect, one surface will have a bone, so you can't be successful every time, unfortunately. And then some surfaces of the die will have the bleed effect symbol with a number. When you roll one of these, you take away the number of HP printed on the die from that enemy and then place a bleed effect. So that's an extra good roll right there. And if you want a refresher on bleed, bleed is basically fantastic. And there are details right here on the back of the gear lock reference sheets. So we've got effect dice definitions. The bleed effect makes it so that this unit, whichever unit has bleed, takes one true damage at the start of its turn and that lasts the entire battle. So you can use this die on an enemy that you would really like to get rid of and just let it bleed away. Very charming. The second die in the assassin profession is actually die number six and it is throwing knives. So let's go ahead and have a look at that one. So as you can see, the throwing knife die has, you know, pictures of throwing knives on the side, and then it has a number value printed on here. So essentially what this does is it does the number printed on the die worth of damage to a non-adjacent baddie. So normally when Duster is attacking enemies, she's going to target her baddies using melee combat style, but the throwing knives enable her to do damage at a distance for a value of one or two, depending on the face that you roll. This die, of course, also has a bones face because what would too many bones be without bones? So that was throwing knives. And then the third and final die in the assassin profession is the vibro blade. And the vibro blade is very interesting. You can use it by itself or you can use it with something called D cells, which we are going to talk extensively about when we get to it in this discussion. So the vibro blade more or less just does extra damage to a target. When you target an enemy and roll this die against them, you just do the amount of damage that's printed on the die face to that enemy. Duster was introduced as part of the Too Many Bones Undertow set, however, so there are special enemies in that game with new enemy types called Krellin and Mech. So if you are using the Viper Blade against an enemy of that type, you actually do one extra damage on top of what's printed on the die face. So this does a little bit of extra damage against special baddies that appear in Undertow. However, the base damage printed on the die gets done to everybody. As you can see, these die faces also have some D cell icons in the bottom right corner. And what that means is that there's an extra effect when you use D cells. There's also a bone face because, hey, too many bones. So what do the D-cells do? We're gonna talk about it a little more extensively when we get to the actual D-cells die. But if you have D-cells and you roll this die and you roll a face that has the D-cell image on it, then you'll automatically decrease your D-cell count. And then if the baddie that you hit with this die has five or fewer baddie points, so a five, a two, or a one, then this die will not only do damage to that baddie, but the die will stun it. And if you want to check the back of this sheet, the stun effect causes that unit to lose its next turn, but negative effects still apply. So basically the Vibro Blade does some nice damage, but it can also do a little bit more than that if you happen to have some D cells. And that is Duster's assassin profession. Next, we've got this lovely survivalist profession line, which is what we're going to talk about next. This profession also allows you to get to the Vibro Blade. So there are a couple of ways to get to that particular die as indicated on the Gearlock mat. So the first die in this tree is actually really important and I recommend getting it early. It is called Flint and Tender. And Flint and Tender is an unusual die because normally you think about using your dice during an encounter. However, Flint and Tender is not used during an encounter. It's used during the recovery phase only. 
When you roll it, you can heal any gear lock or you can heal Nightshade for up to the number of HP printed on the die. And one of the things that's super nice about Flint and Tinder is that there is no bone space. The minimum amount of HP that you can recover is one, but it goes up to two. And if you're very lucky, to three. So this is a really nice die to have just for healing purposes in general, and also because it is one of the things that enables Nightshade to heal. So that is Flint and Tinder. And then the other die in this profession, before we just get to the Vibroblade again, is called Feign Death. Duster is a very tricksy gear lock, and this is one of her most enjoyable tricks. And again, this die is one of those ones that doesn't have any bad faces. So if you roll a heart with a two, that just means that you heal two HP immediately, which is pretty cool. And there are two faces of this die that have that result. All the other faces have this neat little skull icon that indicate that Duster is about to feign death. So when you roll this result, you're obviously not dead yet. So you place it in your active slot. Then with that die in your active slot, the next time you would be knocked out, when you would lose your last HP, instead of actually being KO'd, you set your HP to two, and then you place an untargetable effect on yourself. And that makes it so that enemies cannot come after you for the next turn. So again, if you ever want clarification on an ability, always look at the effect dice definitions on the gear lock reference sheet because everything you actively need for that gear lock should be there. So here we have the untargetable effect. Until the start of this unit's next turn, it cannot be targeted by opposing units. So that means that baddies will not come after you. And if Duster is all alone on the battle mat and there's no nightshade for them to go after, that means that baddies with no target will just not move. But you get a turn of reprieve from any attacks. It's pretty nice. So that is Feign Death. We'll go ahead and put it in its slot. And then again, you have an arrow coming down to Vibroblade. So there are two ways to get to your Vibroblade. Even though it's a red die and kind of part of the assassin line, you can see from the arrows leading down that you can follow the survivalist profession to get there if that's what you choose to do. Duster's third profession is Gadgeteer, and she does in fact have some very cool stuff going on in this particular part of her mat. The first die in this profession is called Bottled Smoke, and it can either be placed in an active slot for later, or it can be used immediately. Given that this is too many bones we're talking about, two of the die faces will actually have bones on them, but all of the rest are going to be this cool bottled smoke symbol. And again, you can either use it right away, or you can place it in an active slot and trigger it later. But basically on your turn, you can trigger this die and it adds an untargetable effect die to yourself, which again, gives you a turn until enemies can attack you again. So if you don't want that smoke from the baddies, then you use some bottle smoke to keep them off your back for a turn. This next one is called Infusion Bracers. So again, it's too many bones. Two of the faces are bones, so you won't be successful every time. But when you roll successfully, this is an active die. It can go in the active slot. I sometimes just put it on my duster chip, specifically because this activates the next time a baddie attacks you. So the official rule is the next time a baddie attacks you, you do the damage printed on the die face in return, even if you are defeated. So it doesn't say they have to hurt you. They just have to attack you and you still get to hit them even if you are defeated, which is really nice. So this is like a one-time use lashback with some upgrades. And I really enjoy it when a baddie triggers it. You'll notice also that the non-bone sides of this die have the lovely D-cell symbol on them in the bottom right. And what that means is that when you have D cells, not only does this do the normal thing that's on the die, so hit an enemy back after it attacks you, but it also takes down your D cell count and uses that charge to stun an enemy that has five or fewer baddie points. So generally the infusion bracers are great because you can hit someone back when they attack you. If you've got D cells, not only do you hit them back when they attack you, but you can cause them to miss their next turn, which is pretty awesome. Our next die in this particular profession is called Micro EMPs, and this one's also pretty neat. It does have two bones faces, so it's not successful every time, but all these other sides will have this symbol with a five, and then of course the D cell symbol in the bottom right corner. And what this means is that this die, when rolled against a baddie who is worth five baddie points or less, will disable that baddie. And then there's an extra effect if you have D cells. So disable, and again, if you wanna check, it'll be on the reference sheet. Disable causes a unit's skills to be suspended and it lasts the entire battle. So this die is great for when you've got somebody with poison or another ability that you just absolutely hate and you don't want them to be able to keep using it on you. If you can disable them, well, then they have to stop for the rest of the battle. So it can take a while to train for this die, but getting it is pretty convenient. 
And again, there are D cells in the bottom right of this particular die. And again, what that means is that you're going to add a stun effect die to that baddie if it's worth five points or less. And that will cause it to miss its next turn. So we've got three dice with these lovely D cells on them. The Vibroblade, the Infusion Bracers, and the Micro EMPs. So D cells are the last die in the Gadgeteer profession. When you roll it, you might get bones or you might get some number of D cell batteries. So the numbers range from one to a maximum of three. Once you've rolled this die, what you do with it is you put it in your active slot and you use it as a counter. So let's say that we did roll three D cells. If we are going to use any of these dice that have the D cell icon against our troll youngin, then we will automatically decrease this by one. So you don't get to choose whether to use your D cells. It just happens automatically. But if we are out on the mat and we want to roll the vibro blade against the troll youngin, so let's just pop duster out there and see what happens. If she can do the vibro blade, she will roll it. We do one damage to the troll youngin because that's what's printed on the side. And we're going to add a stun effect to the troll. And then every time you use a die that has that D cell symbol, you're going to do the same thing until you run out of D cells. Then you have to roll that die again and see if you can get some more. Now we get into Duster's wolf sister profession, which is super fun because this is the one that involves nightshade. And there's some special things about this particular profession that you do need to know in order to play Duster correctly. So the first die in this profession is just Duster's innate um, ability, which is just having Nightshade's initiative die out there. Nightshade is great, and it's going to come to Duster's rescue many times throughout a game. So you're just glad to start with Nightshade. But Nightshade can be upgraded. It can get more powerful throughout the game. So the first thing that you can do to make Nightshade a little punchier is to get the Promise of Prey die. And that is right here, die number 14. On a close look, you can see that there are bone spaces. Even Nightshade is not perfect. Although, I mean, wolves are always almost perfect. But the remaining sides are going to be these little teeth, these little sets of fangs with a times two in the middle. And that's what most sides of this die are going to be. When you roll a Promise of Prey, basically what it does is if you get a successful side, then this is going to be either placed in a lock slot because you can roll it before Nightshade is actually on the mat to play. So remember, Nightshade doesn't come to battle automatically. It only appears when Duster is missing HP. However, that does not mean that you can't roll Nightshade's dice before Nightshade actually shows up. So when you roll this, you can either lock it or you can place it on a baddie. So rather than lock this die, let's say that we're going to place it on the careless troll. And let's say that Nightshade is in fact around to do something about this troll. With Promise of Prey, it says while Nightshade is on the battle mat, you can apply this die to any baddie. On its turn, Nightshade may place itself adjacent to this baddie. So that means that Nightshade could be, you know, over here. It could be anywhere and just come and be right up next to this little troll youngin. And then this baddie is going to take double the damage the next time it's attacked by Nightshade. So if Nightshade decides to attack this little troll youngin and we get two successes, it's actually going to turn into four damage instead of two because of Promise of Prey. And then this little troll youngin would be dead. Go Nightshade. So that is Promise of Prey. It's a nice die to have, especially if you want to bump up Nightshade's abilities. We'll reset everything for now, and let's talk about Ferocity, which is the next die in this profession. So Ferocity is an interesting die because you can only use it while Nightshade is on the battle mat. So basically you can lock it or you can do an instant use. But if Nightshade is here and you want to use this die, if you roll it and get one of these faces, then you basically get a free training point for one of Nightshade's possible skill trees, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So this is like a free training point for Nightshade, and you can either bump it up on the Killer Instinct or Alpha Wolf die, depending on which one you picked. However, because this is a training die with potentially really nice rewards because it saves you training points, it also has these dreaded red bones faces, which actually you shouldn't dread them because bones are always good in this game. Even if they don't benefit you now, they lead to something else later. So these red bones, so these ones that are clearly filled in with red, what that means is that these bones absolutely must be placed in your backup plan. Normally when you roll bones, you can decide to just like not take them and roll the die again later. But in this case, you must, must, must place this in the backup plan. So that is what the red bones are for. However, if you're lucky, you'll roll successfully with Ferocity, and that means you'll get to train one of these two branching pathways that Nightshade can take each game. So when we look here, Nightshade can get dice in both of these slots, but one of them is a branching pathway, which we're going to talk about. 
So Alpha Wolf is the first one we're going to discuss because it's easy. So if you want to put a training point into Nightshade or you roll well on Ferocity, then you can bump up a point on Alpha Wolf, which is a really nice die. As you know, Nightshade's HP stat just has a base value of 2, and it's always 2. But that will change if you start to improve Nightshade's stats with this Alpha Wolf die. So you don't roll this die, you train it, and you can do that with either training points or with a good roll on the Ferocity die. So we've got a plus 1. It goes... It goes all the way up to plus six if you invest enough, but this is how you increase Nightshade's HP stat. So that is Alpha Wolf. Now we're going to put it here and we're going to talk about possibly Nightshade's most interesting die, uh, which is Killer Instinct. And Killer Instinct is interesting because, again, it's not a die you roll. It's like a counter. And you're going to choose which path you want Nightshade to take when you take this die. So within the Killer Instinct die, there are actually two separate tracks for Nightshade. One is called the Dire Wolf Path, and the other one is called the Timber Wolf Path. And again, these can be built up with training points or by rolling the Ferocity die, which is why you really want this die and you want to try to roll it consistently. So we're going to talk about the Dire Wolf Pathway first. What this does is it gives Lashback to Nightshade, and then it can actually get Leech, which is a separate power. So on level one, you get one Lashback. On level two, you get two Lashback. On level three, you get one lashback plus leech. And then on level four, you get two lashback plus leech. And basically what leech does is it allows Nightshade to heal HP that's equal to the damage Nightshade dealt, as long as Nightshade is not defeated. So basically what that means is that if Nightshade attacks or does lashback based on the dire wolf die, as long as Nightshade wasn't knocked out by the attack, the Nightshade will actually heal HP that is equal in value to the damage that it did. So this is a great die to have to keep Nightshade in the game, especially if you've been working with the Alpha Wolf die as well, and Nightshade just has more HP to gain and maintain. So that's the Dire Wolf path. Your other option with the Killer Instinct die is to do the Timber Wolf path. So the Timber Wolf path is shorter and it's simpler. Basically what it does is it adds to Nightshade's attack stat, so it gets to roll more attack dice. So this is plus one attack die, and if you go up to the second level, there's only two levels for Timberwolf, then you get two added to Nightshade's attack stat. And while having the ability to do lashback and to leech HP does sound exciting, having the ability to roll a whole bunch of attack dice as Nightshade is also pretty exciting. So you're just going to have to make your choices. So those are all of the dice in the Wolf Sister profession. Now we're going to talk about Duster's consumables, of which she has two. One is called Scrag Roots, and one is called Blade Dip. And if you want to read the details about those for yourselves, you'll be directed to the back of this sheet where we can look at the specific info provided by Chip Theory. But Scrag Roots and Blade Dip are discussed at the bottom of the Critical Duster Details section. When you acquire Scrag Roots, you roll it, and then you just place it in your locked slot. And this is basically going to serve as a counter. Uh, you can end up with just one value on your Scrag Roots, or you can go to two, or even three. But let's say that we rolled a three and we've got it here in our locked slot. Basically, every single time that a negative effect die would be placed on Duster, so maybe a stun effect or a poison or anything that's going to just kind of impact her in battle, then she actually just gets to avoid that and then reduce the scrag roots by one. So you exhaust this die when you are out of scrag roots, but for as long as you have them, they're like a countdown that lets you avoid nasty dice from being put on Duster, which is cool. Meanwhile, Blade Dip is a counter that lets you upgrade Duster's trusty dagger. This die only has values of one or two, but just like with Scrag Roots, you're going to put this in your locked slot, and then you can reduce it when you want to use it. So if you're going to do a Blade Dip, you can reduce this counter by one to apply the poison effect to some attack dice. So let's say that Duster's out here. She's hanging out next to our troll youngin, and she wants to do blade dip. Let's say that we had our two that I just popped up here before. So we're going to roll our attack dice. Let's say we're going to roll two attack dice, and we're also going to go for blade dip. So we are going to reduce this counter by one. Then Duster has a chance to poison this troll youngin. So we're going to roll our dice. All right, well, that was a great attack just to start with. But we got a two and a one, so that's three off of its four health to begin with. Beautiful work but we're also going to place a poison effect die. And how much poison do you put? Well, you put the poison effect that matches the number of attack dice that you rolled. So I, I, I rolled two attack dice. So we're going to put two poison on the troll youngin, and it's definitely going to die next turn because poison makes you take one true damage at the start of your turn, and then you tick the counter down until it exhausts. 
So that was a really nice roll. However, there is a catch. If one of these die results had been a bone, that would have negated the poison effect, and I just would have done two damage to the troll, and there wouldn't have been any poison effect come out at all. So when you use your blade dip, it doesn't work every time, because if you roll bones on the attack, it negates the poison. So there's a little bit of a risk there, but you can also do some pretty sweet extra damage that way. So that is Blade Dip, and with that, we have covered all of Duster's dice. So let's talk about her backup plan and her innate plus one, which is, of course, part of the backup plan. All gear are going to have a backup plan a breakdown on their reference sheet, and we're going to talk about what Duster's options are. If she spends one bone, Duster can get pack mentality, and that means that you can move Duster or Nightshade to a position adjacent to the other on the battle map. Duster can also switch targets at the moment of doing this. So this lets you group them together, and it also gives Duster a little bit of target switch power, which is really nice. For two bones, you can do backstab. That means that you can stab a baddie that's adjacent to both Duster and Nightshade for two damage. So there's a reason to maybe use pack mentality on one turn, stay together, and then use backstab on another. For three bones, you can do Cry Wolf. This one hurts a bit. You have to take two true damage, which stinks, but you get to place the untargetable effect die on Duster. So there may be times when you consider this worth it, especially if there's somebody who's gonna hit you for a lot more than two true damage out there on the battle mat. Four bones is Fortunate Discovery that lets you acquire a consumable die of Duster's choice. So that's one way we can get our lovely Scrag Roots or our Blade Dip. For five bones, you don't get anything, but once you get to six, as usual, you can upgrade to an eight plus one. So Duster's innate was that she can start on any position on the battle mat and she starts with Nightshade. Once she upgrades to an eight plus one, that's Shadow Caster. So she gets the same powers as before. She can start anywhere on the battle mat. She still gets her wolf. But at the start of battle, Duster can also place an untargetable effect die on herself, which essentially gives her a free turn to run around and do damage without anybody being able to touch her. Also, as usual, Chip Theory does provide us with some beginner build options, and this is always worth reading in order to know what might be best when you are playing Duster for the first time. So for stats, the recommendation is that you grab a couple of HP early on so that she has a better chance of survival. And if you give her another dex and another attack die, she'll get a little bit more flexibility later in the adventure. For skills, again, if survivability is your priority, Bottled Smoke is a good one because, again, it makes you untargetable, so it gives you a little break from attacks. If you jump into the Assassin profession, it's also a good way to do a bunch of damage. And then, as mentioned, around day five or six, it's good to start upgrading Nightshade if you haven't already started. So that about sums up Duster. Duster is a powerful and versatile gearlock who holds her own by herself or with a party. Of course, with Nightshade around, it's always a party. So use these BFFs in tandem to enjoy pack bonding time while also terrorizing some baddies. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Duster. If you haven't played her before or it's been a while, you should absolutely get her out for your next game of Too Many Bones because she's an absolute blast to play. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another gearlock guide soon and happy gaming, everybody.